dear friends, Denise is going to introduce a leadership program, program from Leadership Excellence Series. So most of you have been here for a couple of years, probably remember that a couple of years ago, three years ago, almost nobody in the club knew about the leadership track in Toastmasters International. So almost nobody had this, uh, somebody had it, leadership manual, where can you borrow it? Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Almost nobody had these manuals, nobody knew what to do with them, and uh, we put a lot of effort to um, provide information to members, what we have to do, how we have to develop, how we have to uh, improve according to the leadership track of those clusters. And now we have in the same, in very room, uh, three competent leaders, and one of them is going to present a very advanced uh, level of leadership track, and that's a program. So it, it implies that uh, Taskmaster International provides us with some script which Taskmaster International think we have to know. And the competent leader, who is Denise, is going to present this script with some addition of his own, some additional experience he had while being the president of Moscow Free Speakers. And uh, as we know, he's been president for half a year, even more than half a year. And I would say it was quite a successful term, so he has a lot of share. And of course it was not only his uh, development that provided this uh, good things for the club, Moscow, Moscow Free Speakers, but also of his, his team, the executive committee. And today Denis is going to tell us how to build a successful team and how to be a part of the team. So I invite here Denis Rachuk. DFL Postmasters, or sort of DMN President, DFL Postmasters, and yes. Now, Toastmasters and Toastmasters International on the whole are about developing your leadership skills. If you don't believe me, you can just check the morals of the organizations on their sides. Now, and we'll do that, develop, develop your leadership skills by creating opportunities for you to participate in Toastmaster projects from being the Toastmaster or the general relator at the meeting to organizing a contest or a party, say a speech contest or a New Year party to being an officer in the executive committee and while doing this, participating in these projects you will work with teams and sometimes even organize the teams to work with and today I will give you seven steps Toastmaster International recommends you going through when you try to organize your team. Your team. <coughs> By the way, I found that with a little tweaking, the first letters of these steps make somewhat nice acronym. Sredat Kiem. Now, for those of you who know Russian, you may sound like, told you. For those of you who don't know Russian, Sredat Kiem may be associated with Toastmasters environment or Wednesday Toastmasters. And Wednesday Toastmasters is the day when our rival club, Toastbusters, holds its meetings where the president tries to steal members from Moscow Free Speakers. Now the first letter, sorry, the first letter of the seven steps of orga organizing, all of you understand that, you, that, that it is engrossing, right? It has been great. <laughs> the, the first letter stands for, something wrong with this choice, stands for Select members of your team. There is not, not much to tell about it, except I can give you an interesting phrase I like from a book I read once, that to, I'm paraphrasing now, that to start anything you better 
first invite good people to the bus and after you invited good people to the bus you seat them at the right places in the bus so at the first stage you invite good people to the bus <coughs> now the second letter stands for review goals after you invited suitable people in your bus to go somewhere you actually define with them where, where exactly do you go and so this is about the second stage the third stage is the third, the third letter stands for establish establish parameters sounds serious but it, it is generally about defining how do you communicate in your team how do you solve problems in your team and how do you make decisions in your team as I see it there are several ways of communication possible communications in your team I personally prefer communicating by email because I think that in email you have the history of the communication saved then writing things is cognitively more demanding meaning than when you write things you have to think clearer than when you just talk to people and uh, personally this is my personal problem when I talk to people face to face after 10 to 15 minutes my mind switches off I'm not able to perceive what people are talking about that's my problem <laughs> <laughs> I thought that email was way superior much more superior than communicating face to face until I participated in a meeting conducted by Mary Beckett and I was very impressed with how effective the meeting went so email perhaps is not superior to facing people face to face so it's up to you to choose in particular on the 8th of March on the 8th of March <laughs> now another very important issue is the way you have to decide with your team how you make decisions in your team and as I, and as I, and as I see it there are three possible ways the first way is autocratic when the leader just issues orders the second way is something I call semi-autocratic when team members present their opinions and the leader makes decisions taking into consideration these opinions and the third one, my favorite is the, the democratic one when anyone from the team can present an opinion and then by voting you decide whether to accept the offer or decline the offer. Why I like it? Because in democratic way you distribute power and by that it helps a lot to handle conflicts, possible conflicts in team. It, it sort of shows respect to people and creates a sense of fairness. Right? Now, the fourth letter stands for for developing plans after you set goals of course you have to develop some plans back in 1950s an American psychologist George Miller was wrong no, 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 it's, it's okay. It's E. Developing. Develop. <laughs> oh, it's correct. <laughs> later on. We'll deal with the grammar later on. Now, grammar and watch. <coughs> now, where were, where was I? Now, an American psychologist back in the 1950s, George Miller, found that people can hold in their memory, in working memory, seven plus to minus things. So, in my personal experience, it's difficult to make anything more worthwhile than brushing your teeth or eating something without pre-planning it. The fourth letter, what's it called? The fourth letter stands for 
assigning roles and responsibilities. At the first stage you invited people to your bus. At the fifth stage you decide who exactly you sit at which place in your bus. <coughs> I learned <coughs> in a difficult way, in a hard way, that it is very important to clarify who does what and not to intrude into other people's territory because it pro provides some conflicts, provokes some conflicts. The sixth letter stands for <coughs> tracker. Team's progress. After you finally went somewhere to your goals in your bus, you have to track from time to time how members of your team actually perform on the goals and this is once again this demands an individual approach meaning that some people are absolutely okay about you asking them every minute every hour or I don't know every day about how well they are going and some people hate when you interfere with the, with the process and if the person delivers the results I think you shouldn't actually bother him or her and the very important last point is maintaining healthy relationships. To work effectively or even to work at all, you have to maintain healthy relationships in your team. And to me, it all boils down to respect. You have to first earn respect from team members, and you owe respect to your team members. And the way to earn respect, as I see it, is to be ready to sit in. I see the sign. Thank you. Uh, is to be ready to be in trenches with your teammates, meaning that you are ready to back up a team member if one just can't perform his duties. Our great General Swarov worked with soldiers from time to time. Bill Gates was a very one of the hardest workers in the early days of Microsoft. He programmed, he did his own accounting, he negotiated contracts. And a very good example in the life of our clubs is Mary Beckett, who did it all from preparing paper materials to meetings to being the president even though she tries to steal some of our members, most of the <laughs> members. <coughs> and naturally you owe respect to people even if you own your own business <coughs> and pay people money it's still a nice clever thing to respect people because if you don't do that people will snatch the first opportunity to jump the ship and get a better job and in our situation, when we work with people who devote their personal time to the club, not respecting people is a deadly sin and will likely lead to disintegration of the team. Now, I see a great enthusiasm on the faces of those of you who are still awake. <coughs> Toastmaster International, especially being an officer, or even being the president is a very good laboratory for your leadership skills. Remember about Sreda TM, you may remember about it as Toastmaster Environment or Wednesday Toastmasters. <laughs> <coughs> and we are looking forward to seeing you as our executive committee officers, presidents and successful in other, any other areas. <coughs>